Often we let him mount up to the highest branches, until he felt the free wind, but we set a guard at the tree's foot. One day he refused to come down. Orcs came on us at unawares. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Having now completed the recent Gollum game, I wanted to come back and make a spoiler-filled lore review on the game at large. That is a spoiler warning for the Lord of the Rings Gollum game, but I also have a non-spoiler review as well, so please check that out. Today we'll discuss the settings, characters, and plot in particular to see how well aligned each one is with the world that Tolkien created in his works. First, in the time since my non-spoiler review, the game has been released in full and it has not been received well. I've really been pondering my score of 7 out of 10 for the game since it is one of the higher scores out there for the game overall that I've seen on the internet. And while I think it is perhaps a bit generous, perhaps more than I should have been, I do stick with it for reasons that I will get into in this video. However, I will say that overall with this game, I'm realizing that I'm really approaching this game both as a gamer, but also more particularly as a fan of the lore. As a creator, my focus is certainly not on reviewing video games, though I do play a fair amount of video games myself, many of which are Lord of the Rings, and many of which are not. So my score was higher than many others based on the fact that I actually really quite enjoy the lore of this game for the most part, though I think it will have a small group of players for years to come. Also, I think the fact that it is a game set in a world of lore, The Lord of the Rings, with a niche character that not many people have ever really wanted to play as the main character of a game, with another niche involved as well, that being the type of game this is, a platformer, explorative puzzle game for the most part, it makes this a little bit more of a niche type of game. It being rather unoptimized, more so than I had even originally believed, is even more cause though for worry and alarm, and that is totally the fault of the studio that made it. It should not have been released in this state. But I am here to say that there are still gleams of light, gems of the lore, to be found in the settings, characters, and stories, but not enough in my opinion to fully redeem the game, but to redeem it in part. With all that said, I was glad to beat the game, and I'm quite excited for this lore review. Starting with the settings, environment, ambience, music, and feel of the game from a lore point of view, of course, again, it's worth mentioning that there are a lot of glitches and bugs at this point, but putting that aside, what is there is pretty well done in my opinion overall. The music was really quite a nice touch, intense when it needed to be mystical at other times, very reminiscent of Middle Earth music. The art of the game is also quite nice, and when I was running around the environment, particularly in Barad-dûr when I was escaping it, Shelob's lair when the Great Spider was chasing me, and Thranduil's halls in Mirkwood, I felt quite immersed in the game's settings, in the game's version of Middle-earth. Again, the style of the game is different than many that are out there, and that might be off-putting for some, but I must say that Mordor felt like Mordor. It was gruff, full of fire, ash, and stone, and it's uncomfort contributed to the greatness of the environment. Shelob's lair was dark and winding, full of bones and corpses and, of course, spiderwebs. Mirkwood felt grand and natural and mystical, but also like it had some dark secrets, like Mirkwood. However, the story introduced something called the Haze in Mirkwood, this purple mist of elven magic that guarded the realm, but was generally a made-up concept concerning its counterparts in the lore. I will say it is somewhat close to Galadriel's mist from the canon, but it did feel a bit weird in the context of Mirkwood, especially with how powerful this haze, this purple smoke was. Now I will say that when I felt like I was close to escaping the elves, they just popped up, making a mission feel a bit pointless because I wasn't even close to escaping them and it was all happening within their realm inside of the haze. That is where I will say also that this game is a platformer and has some exceptions to setting lore, which must be accounted for in the creation of such a game, but it was, at times, a bit ridiculous. Like when I got up to the King's Chambers, the Thranduil's Chambers, it was so extraordinarily, ridiculously high up in the realm of the Wood Elves that it felt quite implausible for a king to actually live all the way up here, so far from the main part of his realm, or at least the lower dungeons. Of course, markings, arrows, ledges for grabbing, and so on were very common occurrences in this game, scattered throughout all of the settings, which also contributed to a lack of immersion at points. Ah yes, thank you King Thranduil for putting these ledges in your bedroom specifically so I could climb them and get the item I was looking for. Very appreciated. 
it was a bit much at points. <laughs> but I never felt like I was outside of Middle-earth, really. Except perhaps in the very last room of the entire game. You walk through this magic door, and eventually come into this room with a giant floating orb that was the source of this magic haze that protected Mirkwood, and there are a bunch of flying platforms everywhere, and everything gets pretty wacky and chaotic. The craziness of the setting also made the point in the story seem off, as Gollum becomes a bit of an action hero in that last part, which was weird. The game ends with the cinematic of Gollum going through Moria, not being able to push open the doors of Durin, which actually made me laugh because I made a similar remark of how I wondered if Gollum was too weak to open the doors in my Doors of Durin video, and at least in the game it does seem true here. <laughs> Overall, I did like the settings we got, certainly felt that there were some things missing. Uh, it was unfortunate to say the least that there was no Dead Marshes level where I got captured by Aragorn, and it made the story a bit odd too as I went from being captured by Sauron, to running away from Shelob, to being captured by the elves. Good things there, but some disjointed and strange decisions were also made regarding the settings. Overall, I'd give the settings category a 7 out of 10. I think the category of characters is actually the greatest of the three lore elements for the Gollum game. Sure, there are a few somewhat forgettable characters, background orcs and elves mostly, but most of the characters that you do interact with in this game, even the ones invented by the game that aren't in the lore itself, fit the world and themes of Middle-earth pretty well overall. I really enjoy the characters in the game, especially the antagonist, the Candleman, a black Numenorian in Barad-dûr, and sometimes he is referred to as an outsider from Gondor by some of the orcs while they look for Gollum and Mirkwood. The Candleman was awesome, a riddle teller that paralleled Gollum in some ways, and another character named Mel, who we will discuss in a bit, who also told riddles. This guy gave me Sith Lord vibes and captured my attention while on screen. He also appears with the Mouth of Sauron at times, who is great as well, while the daughter of the Candleman seems a bit underdeveloped. Thranduil and Gandalf are rather serious and actually a bit frightening in this game, but in ways that make sense to their depictions in the lore. Perhaps they are frightening because the story is told from the perspective of Gollum. But again, kind of like how they should have included Aragorn in the Dead Marshes, there were interactions between Gollum and the Elven King that happened off screen, but I absolutely wanted to see it. That speaks to a larger problem with the lore of the game that I'll touch on more in my story section. Finally, there were other important characters like Mel and the Riddlemaster, two elves who made the haze with other elven mages of sorts, and I like these characters and their elven natures, but Mel seemed a bit odd at times, almost too similar to Gollum in ways. And we have hints at a bit of a weird romance or a really close potential friendship between Mel and Smeagol, which was a bit off-putting to some degree. So far, I would give this category around a 7 out of 10, but the inclusion of Gollum versus Smeagol moments in the dialogue, or some small arguments where one has to persuade the other, added quite a bit to the lore of the game for me. And I wish that there was more concerning that, and that it went deeper into the psychology of the character and his fractured mind. I've been asked which paths between Smeagol or Gollum seem more correct according to the canon, and while I can only answer that subjectively, just as this whole review is subjective, I would say that most decisions made as Gollum rather than as Smeagol seem lore accurate to me concerning this point in the character's life. I played the character as rather vengeful, even towards friends, and of course against those who betrayed him as well, with some hints of softness and kindness here and there. His story overall was a tragedy. He was a killer. And though he almost redeemed himself in The Lord of the Rings at times, Gollum won against Smeagol, as did his lust and desire for the ring. Therefore, with a bit of those elements included in the game, I will give the characters in this game an 8 out of 10. I do, of course, wish there was more depth and complexity to it, and some interactions did feel a bit strange, but I enjoyed them overall. The voice acting was also really good in my opinion, and the orcs reminded me of the orc voices from Battle for Middle-earth. Finally, as for the story overall, I think what we got was generally well done. The escape from Mordor, escape from Mirkwood, and so on were quite lore accurate, although with a couple changes, but most of them made sense, and the mechanics of the game do change some other things. Mentions of lore such as the Witch King and Aarner, or Baron and Luthien, and so forth, aside the main story, which were not only fanservice, but made me feel like the story was rather true to Middle-earth, as many characters in Tolkien's works make such references as well. The story was, in fact, so good that 
We come to perhaps my biggest complaint about the game from a lore perspective, and the reason why I do not think that the lore itself entirely redeems the game against its many other issues. The story of Gollum's travels are overshadowed by mundane and sometimes repetitive and annoying tasks. Like I said in my non-spoiler review, we can't really blame the game for not being something else entirely, but for what it was, it should have been far better at such things. We must differentiate the story, the lore, and the narrative of Gollum from the tasks and quests that you are forced to do in this game. This is a game about the story of Gollum. This is not about the Beastmaster Tamer of Mordor, so why am I doing these weird tasks? Why am I escaping from the Elves of Mirkwood three times just to be returned to them, but I do not get to see and engage in Thranduil's interrogations of Gollum, if even in a cutscene? Why do they skip over Aragorn capturing Gollum in the Dead Marshes when anyone would have loved to play or see that? and just tell us a bit about it in some text and dialogue instead. But, of course, there's still enough time for me to sneak around some elves for an ultimately inconsequential stealth chapter of the game. It's honestly a bit frustrating, because the story that is actually there is quite good. The only major exception that I might say was rather weak was the very end, with this magic ball of power that both the elves and men of Mordor try to claim, and Gollum ends up destroying, again, like he was the hero of some action movie. There are some weird story elements with Gollum's bird from Mordor as well, some weird things there for sure. But again, this game, if it was always going to be about Gollum, should have been more about Gollum. Have the story show us his captivity in Mordor, sure, his partnership, if you can even call it that, with Shelob, his capture by Gollum, his time in Thranduil's halls, his conversation with Gandalf, his escape from Mirkwood, his travels through Moria, his time with the Hobbits, journey back through Mordor, and his eventual death in Mount Doom. And maybe even the game should have started with riddles in the dark between him and Bilbo. To the game's credit, they try to interlace pieces of lore throughout Gollum's conversation with Gandalf across the game, using narration, but man, it's not quite enough. Overall, I think I would give the story perhaps a 6 out of 10, I think, because what is there is actually quite great and quite close to the story of Gollum and the lore, and the changes that are there are generally well done, such as Gollum being on the Great Tree during a festival of the elves, and that being when the orcs attacked in the game. I knew it was coming, and when it finally happened, how it happened was awesome. I think there should have been more focus here, which would have further diversified the gameplay, settings, characters, and more, and it was a lost opportunity. I think overall, to wrap all of this up and finally put the Gollum game behind me, I think the best way to sum up this game is lost opportunity. Again, it is hard to blame it for what it is as an idea, but we can easily blame it for not being better, far better. It should have been optimized, given more attention, care, and detail. So, as a lore review, I give this game a 7 out of 10 overall in its lore, matching my overall score for the game of 7 out of 10. If I put the lore of this game entirely aside, the character setting story, and looked at it purely from a gameplay perspective, focusing on graphics and setting and frame rate and tasks at hand and combat and all that kind of stuff, how well it runs, I could easily justify putting it at a 3, 4, or 5 out of 10, but I think the lore is a bit of a gem that this game definitely needed. I doubt I will ever play it again, at least all the way through, and I hope that they go on to make major fixes and patches for it. I do not hope to see another game like it, as Lord of the Rings game entries should be far better. This game does not hold up to the lore and gameplay of many Lord of the Rings games from yesteryears, nor to many other kinds of modern games, but I think there are a few elements of the game that mildly redeem it partially. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our tale. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this lore review on the Gollum game. Please hit that like button and share this with a friend if you did. I'll be honest, this was a bit of a tough game to go through. <laughs> Wasn't the best experience, but I wanted to see it through. I wanted to, uh, to make this lore review, so any likes are definitely appreciated after all of that. What are your thoughts on the Gollum game if you've played it? And what are your thoughts on it if you never will or will never want to? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Wet Out United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping, and use the code WEST at checkout. Please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor to your patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Blair Scout Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Elizabeth Calvert, 
Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrovic, Anthony Harmon, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswall Project, and King of Games 2500. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again on Sunday. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.